Perfect. Liz, if I heard that from your office correctly, we are recording. All right. So our plan for today, sorry about that. So our plan for today is we're going to be talking about forecasting. So I know that all of you are parents of current ninth graders. So we'll be looking at forecasting for next year for 10th grade. Um, my name is Alex Slinkard Galpin. I'm a school counselor here at Ashland High School. I have letters A through HA. I apologize for the attire. We just had wrestling practice. Uh, and I will let Miss Liz introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz Fletcher. And if your student has a last name that starts with P through Z, they're on my alpha. Very nice. So as I said, today, we're going to be talking about forecasting. So that's planning for next year. That's looking at, you know, kind of which classes we've taken, what it looks like to look at a transcript and things like that. So what is forecasting? So it's the process of predicting the classes we'd like to take next year based on your remaining graduation requirements. And so we did go through this information today with all of the ninth graders during TCP. And so we'll be covering your remaining graduation requirements, how to look at a transcript, how, how that works, your interests. So the student interests, you know, maybe they have a lot of interest in mechanics. And I know that's something that we'll get into, but students can take starting their 10th grade year. And then based on the classes that will be offered, whether that's classes that are currently offered and will still be offered, or whether that's new classes, we have some classes that are on a revolving schedule. So today we will learn how to, it's going to make this video a little smaller. Today we're going to be learning how to read your transcript. We're going to be learning about graduation requirements. We're going to be thinking about classes to take next year. And then we're going to understand how to navigate the AHS course guide and fill out a forecasting form, which we gave to all of the students today. And Miss Liz actually created that, and it's a very helpful guide. All right, so when we are looking here at transcripts, what we like students to look at, especially their ninth grade years, we look at four different sections. So we look at classes, grades, and credits, which for this all intents and purposes is going to be right here where it says 21-22, Ashland High School, grade nine. We're gonna be looking at AHS graduation requirements, which is this upper right box here. And we'll get more into the nitty gritty of each one of these. We are going to be looking at semester and cumulative GPA, which is this lower box down here. And then we'll be looking at organ essential skills and what each letter grade comes out to in terms of calculating GPA, and that's right here. So the organ essential skills is going to be our reading, writing, and math. And then if we look here, that's going to be a breakdown of what each grade is worth when we calculate GPA. There we go. All right, so when we look at a senior's transcript here, we ask the kids, you know, what year did the student take family health? And so this is what, you know, some of you may have students who have already graduated Ashland High School or been at a different high school. This is what our transcript starts to look like once we are further down the road. And so you can see here that this student actually took Spanish when they were at AMS that counted at the high school here. They took some classes ninth grade year, 10th grade year, 11th grade year. And then they have here their beginning of their 12th grade year, semester one classes. And so what we like students to look at here is just see that, you know, family health is a class that we at Ashland High School have students take their junior year. And so we have them look here and find, you know, junior level classes. They'll find junior year and they can find family health. And same with the math class. What math class did the student take junior year? We had them navigate through and look and see that they took algebra too. And so I was actually quite impressed. Everyone there was doing a really good job with being able to read a transcript. Next, what we look at is our graduation requirements. So how many credits do you need to graduate? So in the state of Oregon, we need 48 credits to graduate. In Ashland High School, we need 50. The reason being there is that Ashland High School, we have a career education uh, CCR class that we do our senior year. And we also have a service learning requirement, which is community service. So we need 50 credits to graduate. And so you can see here with this student, their English class, it's a requirement to have eight credits of English, which means we take an English class every semester of high school. They've completed seven and they're deficient or they have remaining one credit. So what that means is that they've done seven semesters total of English and they have one left. So this student here would be going into their last semester of their senior year. So how many years of English do you need to graduate? Like we said, you need four total years, eight semesters. We would need three years of science. As you can see here, we need two from life science two from physical science and two from general science, which is a total of three years of science. And then elective credits, if we're on a traditional diploma, we would need 12 total. 
And so you can see where this student had 15, and that's because likely if the students say enjoy doing a lot of fine and applied arts, they enjoy doing elective, elective classes, PE classes, things like that. Once they fill this requirement, anything extra would go down towards elective. Okay, and then when we look at cumulative GPA, we look at weighted GPA, things such as that. What we like to point out to students is weighted GPA can be different than unweighted GPA. And the reason being is that weighted GPA accounts for AP classes, so our advanced placement classes. And so when we look at our GPA, a weighted GPA would be uh, for an AP class on a scale of one to five, as opposed to one to four. So if I got a four, I got an A in a class, that would be a 4.0. And if I took an AP class, that would be on a 5.0 scale. And so that's how our weighted GPA can be higher than our unweighted GPA. And so we like to show seniors or seniors, we like to show all students this, this happened to be a senior's transcript, where their GPA is, how their GPA is calculated, how many credits they attempted versus completed, and then how that adjusts over the years. And so they can see what the total outcome is and how they can raise their cumulative GPA can be through maintaining high grades, but can also be through taking an AP class, right? So a B in an AP class would be the equivalent of an A in a non-AP class, for example. And then when we look at, as we talked a little bit about earlier, grade points and essential skills. So when we look at GPA here, as you can see where it says A is a 4.0, A minus is a 3.7. What we're looking at there is that's how it's calculated. So if a student were to receive a 3.7, uh, an A minus, that would be a 3.7 towards their cumulative GPA. And so if they took, say, seven classes, we would add up their total. If they had, you know, seven a, uh, six A's and one A minus, then we would add up the six A's, the, the one A minus, which would be a 3.7. And then we would divide by the total number of classes. And that's how they calculate their GPA. And then when you look at essential skills, those essential skills for Oregon are gonna be in reading, writing, and math. And so that's something that we look at. Um, I know that for some of you who might've had recent graduates, essential skills have not been something that has been covered, but for our students now that will be in the class of 2026, uh, they will likely have their essential skills, which are going to be in reading, writing, and math, and that's something that they do here at the school. A lot of times that's tied in with curriculum at the school as well. Okay, and so we like to show students this, that you can track your own graduation progress within PowerSchool. So if they go here to the grades and attendance tab, they look at view graduation progress here at the top. What that's going to take them to is what the next slide looks like. And it's a way for them to be able to track how many credits they have versus how many they need. And so when we go to the next slide here, you can see that they're able to track their graduation plan progress. And so if you can see this, it shows English, math, social studies, and so on. And what it is here is the dark green is what they've completed. The lime green here is what's currently on their schedule. And then the white is what they'd have remaining. So for example, this student was going into their second semester of sophomore year. And so you can tell that they've completed three credits of English to their ninth grade year, one their sophomore year. And then they were in their second semester, which is why this one is light green because it's currently on their schedule. And so this is a nice way to see what they've completed. For example, the students completed all of their PE credits. If they decided to take more PE credits, that would be okay. It would just go down towards elective. And so we like students to have this so they can be empowered to track their own graduation progress, but it's always there, always welcome to come by our offices and check in with us if they have any further questions. And so now it's time to begin thinking about your path after high school. So what we like to talk about to students here is maybe that's an apprenticeship, maybe that is vocational trades program, maybe that's the military, a two-year college a four-year college or university, a gap year, maybe it's going straight into the employment field. We like all our students to know we want them to keep their options open. And that also goes with the classes that they take. We have a lot of fun electives here at Ashland High School, a lot of fun classes in general. And we want them to be able to use the time they have to explore those. So I know that Miss Liz here is gonna go further into what classes we have and kind of what that looks like navigating our course guide. All right, thanks, Alec. Uh, so the course guide, we really emphasize to your students today that the course guide is really their best option for getting familiar with classes for next year and also what's involved with those classes or their prerequisites, all that sort of stuff. 
Um, so first we let them know where you can find it. Um, and so for you all too, if you go on the Ashland website, if you go to families, counseling services, and then forecasting and course guide, there'll be a page where you can find this hyperlink. You'll find this year's and you'll find next year's. You just want to make sure you click on the one that says the 23, 24 school year. So you get the most updated version. Um, and then we also have on the website a link to the forecasting page. That's another thing we handed out to your student today is a copy of a paper form where they're actually going to use that to fill out their classes with you. Um, and then you'll bring that in during conferences on March 2nd and 3rd. And that's what we'll actually use as a guide to put in um, the schedules electronically. So if you go to this website, um, it also has links to that. So if your student comes home and is like, hey, I I don't know what happened to that forecasting page or I didn't get one. You can go to the website and you can download it here. They're also welcome to come into the counseling office because we have extra copies in here as well. All right, next slide, please. Um, so the course guide is really user-friendly. Um, the table of contents is an awesome feature because everything in here is hyperlinked by department. Um, so if you're not wanting to read um, you know, like every single page and you're really just trying to look and see, hey, I want to look in um, at math and just look at, you know, get an idea of what the math classes look like here. Um, you can click on that on the math department um, link right here on the table of contents and it will take you right down to the course description. Um, and so it's really nice to navigate and can kind of cut through some of the extra stuff you're not wanting to look at in the moment. Next slide, please. All right, so this is an example of what the is in the course guide. And so really we were just wanting to emphasize to your student um, that the course guide is really the best tool for forecasting because it has a lot of the information that they'll need to make an informed choice for a class. So first of all, anytime a student asks me like, well, what would I do in that class? I say, hey, let's look at the course guide because the course guide has a description that's written by the teacher that will be teaching that class. So it's really just a great place to get content about like the nuts and bolts of the class. It also has the length of the class because that's going to be important for students. And we'll go over that in a minute when we fill out their forecasting form. Is it a semester long class or a year long class? Because they'll need to know that in planning. So it'll have that in there. It'll have the credit that they earn from it. So if it's a semester long, they're going to earn a one credit, a 1.0 credit. If it's a um, year long class, they're going to earn two, one for each semester. And then it also has the prerequisite. So, um, and we explained to them, you know, what a prerequisite is, because this is not something that ninth graders probably encountered a lot last year because they're brand new. But now as they're taking new classes and, in, you know, they're developing their skills and deepening their skills in different course areas, they'll start to access classes that do have prerequisites. So, you know, this example is French 4. It's a year-long class. The prerequisite is French 3 or instructor permission. Um, it will also say here in the course guide if a class can be repeated for credit. That's a really common question that we get. And the course guide is always the best place to go for that. Um, and the last thing I just want to point out is, um, well, can you go back? Thank you. Um, at the top there where it says return to table of contents, that's another just really handy feature to help you navigate the course guide is if you click on that, it'll take you right back up to the table of contents. And if you wanted to go back to a different content area, like this is world language, if you wanted to go check out science, just the fastest way to do it is to click that blue hyperlink and then go back up to the contents and click where you want to go. All right, next slide. All right, so another super useful tool in the course guide is this matrix that can help you and your students see where they can maximize their college credits. So I know you know, a lot of students are thinking about college already, and um, I know that as a caregiver, you might also be thinking about the cost of college. Um, and so we actually went into Grizz Academy classes a couple weeks ago and gave a little overview of what today was going to look like. And we um, mentioned this again because we wanted to make sure that students understand that there are AP options, um, which you can take for college credit. And one pathway to that is by taking the AP test. Um, and we explained to them that AP is really useful for colleges because AP is a nationally certified program. So if your student decides to take AP US history next year, every day on the same day in May, every student across the country is gonna take the same exact AP test for U United States history. So colleges love that because then they know, right, like the tests that 
you know, your student in Ashland, Oregon is the same as a student in Jackson, Mississippi, is the same as a student in, you know, New York. So um, it's a really portable credit. So if your student is looking at, you know, colleges across the country, that um, AP credit can be really useful. And there's also a, um, like an index on the College Board website, which is the company that makes AP, where you can actually look by college because the AP test is scored on a scale from one to five. Three and above is passing, but colleges can decide what their cut score is. Um, so most public universities will say, yes, a three is passing, a three is good. Um, but some might be like if your student's looking at, say, like a more um, like an elite uh, or a liberal arts college, maybe like a place like Rice or they're aiming really high, like Yale or Harvard or something like that, then you're going to see that the cut scores are going to be higher, that they might require a four or a five. So it just gives you a sense of um, not only how portable AP credit is, what kind of score a student could potentially aim for if they already have um, colleges in mind. Um, and another nice thing is it tells you how many credits a student would earn. So like AP US history, for example, they can earn the equivalent of two college classes, which is a huge amount of savings. Um, and also just less time that a student has to spend, um, especially if they go to like a large, you know, like public school, like less time maybe in like a entry level lecture hall kind of class. Um, and they can just dive, you know, that much uh, more quickly into classes like maybe in their major or other electives that they're really interested in. So, uh, so AP is one option, but students also can oftentimes look at dual credit, which is where they can earn high school credit and college credit at the same time. And so this gives you like a really useful tool to see what classes um, are offered on our campus in which that is a possibility. And if you do the dual credit as a student, it's either free or incredibly reduced. So like the SMU credit, um, I think it's $50 a credit, which would be around like $200 for um, a course, for a four credit course, which is really affordable compared to going there, you know, as a first time freshman. Um, so just an option we want you all to know about um, and it's color coded and easy to read and um, just a really useful tool. Next slide. Um, so some new classes that we highlighted today for your students are classes like GarageBand, um, music theory, which a lot of students have been asking for. So we're really excited for that. Speech and debate, which so many students have been asking for. So that'll be great to get that back going. Um, technical drafting in CAD. And then we also wanted to highlight just a couple of the options new to 10th graders. And this is not an exhaustive list, there's more, but um, things like a push. So AP US history, it's the first time um, um, students have the opportunity to take an AP class. Um, then there's also mechanics, which Alec mentioned, super popular class on campus, um, classes like street law or world religion and world culture. Um, and if you do have a student that's interested in APUSH, we have flyers posted around the school now, including in the counseling office of uh, lunchtime meetings where they can actually go and watch a presentation by the AP teacher um, that gives them more information about what would what would happen in AP US history, um, including things like summer homework, because there is summer homework for a push that is non negotiable students have to have it done the first day or they have to drop the class. Um, and just, you know, other, um, you know, just good points of information about how the class would be structured, you know, what is the AP test like, like what kind of work would they do. Um, so those are offered at lunch and um, flyers are all around the school, so you can encourage your student to come to those. All right, so this is what the forecasting sheet looks like. And so we just wanted to give an overview of the process is that they should be taking this home today um, to share with you all. Um, that we really want parents and students to sign off on classes because we um, it just works better when it's a family discussion and you know everyone can share their points of view and you know help figure out what next year could look like. Um, we encourage them to review their first semester grades to make sure they're not missing any credits. And we said you know if you did fail a class first semester, please come talk to us because we want to help you early um, and figure out a plan to get you back on track for those credits. And then again, we just encourage them to use that course guide, right? Like read the course descriptions, you know, find out if there are prerequisites, um, 
figure out if there's early college credits you wanna earn. Um, and then we reminded them that they're gonna bring this completed form to their appointment on March 2nd or 3rd, um, whenever you all sign up, um, to actually sit down and put these into PowerSchool and um, get them all uh, uploaded electronically. Next slide. All right, so first thing we said is make sure you read the directions, which are on the top of the forecasting form. Um, basically, this is just reminding students that they're not signing up for time slots or for uh, specific teachers. Um, because, you know, for example, if a student happens to put a class in a semester two column, it's not a guarantee the class will be offered at semester two. Um, so we just want them to know, like, you're going to list all your classes, but this isn't exactly what your schedule will look like. Um, we want to make sure they fill out. Oh, can you go back, please? Thank you. Um, we want to make sure they fill out alternates. Um, we want them as much as they can to put the course name and the course number. Um, there's a cheat sheet on the back that has the course number that students can use. Um, and we also wanted to remind them that really what they're focusing on is mostly electives and what they want to do for um, U U.S. history. Um, everything else, the math, the science, the world language, if they're taking a band class, um, if they want to be a TA or a vocational assistant, and even some of the upper level theater and art classes, um, which are pretty rare for a sophomore to take but could happen, um, those require recommendations. So their um, teachers are actually going to put in power school, and students should be familiar with this, that they were in the district as an eighth grader, because it's the same sort of process. Um, their current teachers are going to put in a recommendation for their core classes, except for that U.S. history. That's a different one um, that they're going to decide. But basically, like they're going to put in the recommendation for math and for science. If they're going to do world language again, they'll put in a recommendation for that. Um, and that will drive their core classes. And I know that the science department is already having those discussions with students and talking with them about, you know, options for next year based on how they've done this year. All right, next slide, please. All right, so this is what the back of the um, forecasting sheet looks like. It's just a quick, you know, glance, sort of like cheat sheet where they can look up course numbers. Um, but really, the course guide is the best, um, the best option to figure out classes for next year. So we just want to encourage students not to just rely on this because it's very bare bones and um, doesn't have all the information you need to make the best choice about classes. Next slide. So then we showed them a sample. So what it would look like when they're done. Um, so we told them, hey, see how English 10 is in gray? Um, that means you don't have to pick English 10, you just leave it. Um, you'll go ahead and pick American studies or you know, US, AP US history. I said, I filled this out like I was a student and I said, okay, I'm gonna take AP US history. Um, and then I use the back of that sheet that has the course numbers to put in the course number for that. So they're not going to do math because that's going to come from the teacher. It's not going to, they're not going to do science because that comes from the teacher. Um, and then they have the option to pick, like, do they want to do another PE class? There are two semesters required in Oregon to graduate. So do they want to finish that up now or do they just want to do an elective? So in this example, I said, hey, I'm just going to do basketball and get it done. Flipped over to the back, looked at the course number, put the course number in. Um, and then we pointed out to them, to really use that course guide to make sure classes are semester long or year long. Cause you can see for basketball, intro to manufacturing, mechanics, interior design, those are all semester classes. So I only wrote those down once in either the semester one column or the semester two, but the rogue news we pointed out to them is written twice. And that's because rogue news is a year long class. So you would take that for both semesters and put the same course code both times. Um, we also reminded them that as a 10th grader, they can have an out. So there is nothing written in that section for the out section. If students want to take eight classes, they can. They would just cross out the out and write in the elective that they would want to take. Next slide, please. And then on the bottom of the forecasting sheet, that's where the lists are alternates. The alternates are really important because there's a strong chance they will be enrolled in an alternate in the fall. Um, just because it's, um, we can't always give every student their top choice just based on, you know, the classes they pick and when those are offered and teacher availability. And there's so many factors that go into building um, a master schedule. So it's not, um, 
we can't always give a student their top choices 100% of the time. So we wanted to remind students that you need to fill out all of these alternate spaces with classes you would actually want to take because um, there's a strong chance that you would get one. Um, so then just a reminder, like if they lost their form, go to families, counseling services, forecasting and course guide, and then class of 2026 current ninth graders is the form they'll use. Um, but again, they could also swing by the counseling office and we'll have extra copies on hand. Um, and then just reminding students that forecasting for classes is search for balance, right? Some students might be thinking about going into the workforce or wondering how they're going to balance challenging classes with sports, you know, clubs like theater or um, programs like theater can be really time intensive. Um, making sure that students are budgeting for really necessary things like sleep and relaxation and downtime. Um, when are they gonna have time to do their homework and exercise? Um, and then also what are their career and college goals? And not that we expect them to have it figured out now by any means, but it can be a useful tool to think about at this stage when they're looking at classes anyway. Next slide. All right, we also wanted to let them know that next year we're changing the process to request a class change. Students will have to submit a paper form and requests to change classes will not be accepted by email. And we really wanna do this to make sure everyone is on board, to make sure that you as a parent approve dropping a class. Because sometimes when a student just drops by, we don't always know that. And we wanna make sure that you have a voice in that decision as well. Um, also, you know, like the teacher, um, especially if it's um, like if they're dropping a year long class, we want to make sure the teachers are on board with dropping that year long class and entering into a new one. And then we also told students they're only going to be able to submit one of those during the add drop period, which is um, the first six days of school. So they get three red days, three white days, and that's the deadline for most schedule changes. Um, so they're only gonna be able to submit one form. And so we just really wanna, again, just remind them to choose, you know, choose classes carefully um, because forecasting is so important. We do not make the schedule based on anything except student request. Um, there's some other factors that go in, but that is, 95% of it is student requests. And so we really rely on students to think carefully about what they would want to take in the coming year um, so that we can build a schedule that accommodates um, as many students' requests and wishes as we possibly can. Next slide, please. And so this was just a couple of like common FAQs, you know, frequently asked questions that we get a lot. Um, can sophomores have more than one out? And no, they can have one out per semester, um, but they must take seven classes. Um, and, you know, a common question we get is do AP classes earn more credit? Um, and we say no, they don't earn more credit, but they do earn a higher grade point, like Alec talked about. Um, we talk about, you know, the dual credit options. Students often ask, can I take a class twice? And we encourage them, hey, go to the, go to the course guide because it'll tell you if you can. Um, sometimes students ask if they can get credit for driver's ed. And that is something your student can earn credit for. So say over the summer, they do driver's ed through RCC. They can bring that into the main office or certificate of completion and we can give them elective credit. Um, one thing that is also changing that we talked about with your students today is that if they do want to be a teacher's assistant, which they can as a 10th grader, then they have to have a teacher recommend them for it. So they would need to talk to the teacher now. So say a student wanted to, you know, um, TA for the counseling office, they would need to come and talk to us now so that we could enter in requests for that. Um, and then sometimes students will ask, can I sign up for school to work, which is when we can actually give them credit for having a job. Um, we don't allow that now during forecasting because we need to have proof of employment when they actually start school in the fall. So that would be something they would have to pursue the first week of classes if they're interested. Next slide. And then we just reminded them like, hey, you've got this um, option tonight for your caregivers, encourage them to come. Um, and that was the end of our presentation. Um, so I'm thinking that it might be a great time to open it up to any questions that you all have about anything we've said tonight.